Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at XGen, which is a topic that some of you have been asking for. And I just want to give you a quick overview of what XGen is and how we can use it to create some cool stuff. So yeah, let's get to it. By the way, hopefully the echo is not as bad right now. Uh, I've been adding like more stuff, my D&D stuff, more soundproofing. Um, yeah, things are getting nice here in the office. So let's go. Um, this is a scene that I worked with a, another group, one of my, my school groups. Um, if you're watching this, hey guys, how are you doing? And uh, it's a Spartan helmet. So we modeled the Spartan helmet. And uh, now we're going to add hair to the Spartan helmet, which is very, very common. Like you've probably seen this or this sort of like depictions. Not just Spartan helmets, also like medieval helmets. But like the usual Spartan helmet has this very nice like a uh, red coat of hair going around. Kind of like a broom, right? So yeah, this is this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be um, we're gonna be adding the hair, and I'm gonna be showing you a very fast and easy way to use um, to use action. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this button right here, which is called Use Default Material. It really helps whenever you're using like glass and metals here inside of Maya because it usually makes the shaders look really weird on the viewport, and unless you're doing like real time rendering, uh, it looks really weird. So let me show you here real quick how this looks. Uh, right now, which is with the render. It has, I think, a tileable texture, like a metal texture that uh, we're, we use for this one. And um, it's just like a three-point light setup, kind of like in a museum. And I think it's gonna look good for the for the hair. So let's see if the render wants to do its job. Hopefully it does. Doo -doo -doo. Let me pause real quick so that we don't waste too much time and uh, I'll show you how it looks after the render is done. Okay, there we go. So it seems like it was the GPU that was uh, making it a little bit difficult for this Tomb Raider. So as you can see, very simple helmet. I mean, quite easy model, I would say. If you guys want me to show you how to model it, we can do it as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a very, very simple element. So uh, XGen is this very cool thing. It, it, does, it, it usually, like a lot of people associate um, XGen with hair. However, it does a lot more than hair. Like I've seen people do crazy stuff with it. And at the end of the day, what Action is, it's an instancing like element or instancing plugin that allows you to create a lot of things using parametric values and and different kinds of uh, scripting that you can just like randomly use to to generate stuff. Okay, so it, it's quite easy to use. I would say like for simple stuff like what we're about to do or. Yeah, just like very simple hairstyles, um, it, it tends to be easy. However, as with every single tool, the more you use it and the more you explore it, the more uh, options are open to you, right? So in this case, I'm gonna go here and I'm actually gonna smooth this thing once just to get a little bit more resolution, there we go. And it is very important that we have UVs. So as you can see, we do have UVs because we're gonna be using some maps to paint where we want the hair to be, uh, well, happen, okay? So I'm gonna grab this guy right here and the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your XGen uh, plugin is turned on. I think by default, I like to have mine turned off because it does take quite a bit of time to load, like 20, 30 seconds, uh, depending on your computer, of course. And if you have it loaded, every single time you open Maya, it's gonna load. So one quick way to optimize your Maya loading times is to remove all of the plugins that you don't need, like uh, XGen, uh, Bifrost, all that stuff. So now here on the XGen um, palette over here, we're gonna be able to create some stuff. If you don't find this one right here, I think you can go here to, was it effects or where is it? can't remember where it is. Usually you get the shelf though. So here in the shelf, I'm gonna open this guy right here, which is the like the basic uh, action thing. And as you can see, we have two things. And this is important because we need to understand what each of these ones do. The description and the collection. So a description is a, a setup, right? Like how you prepare a specific type of like system, hair, fur, as you can see here, feathers, scales, rocks, everything. So a description is how that element how that like a programmation of things is creating the assets that you want the collection is uh, as the name implies a collection of several descriptions so for instance on a character if you want to do like a mustache and a beard and hair and eyebrows and uh, i don't know like like peach fuzz that you sometimes get on the face or like uh, hair on the back or something you would have like a collection it's going to be your character's collection and then all of the different action descriptions for each specific hair system inside of that uh, of that one. So I'm gonna create a new description and the first thing is gonna say, okay, how, how do you wanna call this? I'm gonna call this Spartan um, hair. And usually, this is my personal preference, I like to add like, a, like an underscore desk just to know that this is a description because we might have a lot of things that are called Spartan hair and, uh, and you would definitely wanna have like, you, you definitely wanna know what each of those is. Uh, same for here, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna add this description to a specific collection that you already have, or do you wanna create a new collection? In this case, I wanna create a new one, which I'm gonna call Spartan 
hair underscore collection. I know it keeps like names longer, but for me personally, it helps me keep uh, things organized. So there's a lot of things that we can use here. As you can see, splines, grimable, uh, splines, custom geometry spheres. You usually get the recommendations for what each, each of this specifically works better. Uh, I'm personally going to be using splines for this one. I'm going to do randomly across the surface. And over here, instead of using attributes, which would mean that we would need to write a little bit of scripting, and I want to avoid the scripting right now, uh, we're going to be using uh, placing and shaping guides, which are the things that are going to drive where my hair is going to be. So I hit create. And this is the roadblock that pretty much everyone that gets into XGen uh, hits first. Like I myself did when I was first trying it. It's like, okay, I mean, everything's set up. I have my collection. I have my description. And it seems like I have some sort of like hair or something here, but there's nothing, right? I can't see anything. I click this little eye here to refresh the, the viewport and there's nothing. So what's happening? Well, when you use the setup that I just show you, splines and then use um, groomable things or this thing, the, the guides, you need to add guides and you need at least three guides for this to work. So I'm going to go here into the guides, click this one, add or move guide. I'm going to add one here, one here, one here. Let's do five, one here. And one here. There we go. Now, if I press the little button here, you're going to see that in this case, we're not getting anything. Sorry for the, um, what's the word? The horrible um, like uh, anticipation and then nothing. Um, now, the splines are where they're supposed to be. And we can start like moving these things around to generate a better thing. Now, I'm not sure. There we go. So it's the, it's the shading thing here. So I'm going to remove this shading thing here. And as you can see, what's happening is the geometry is using those guides to populate where I want this thing to happen, which right now it's going to be a little bit uh, difficult to see because we're not seeing the helmet. So I'm going to do something real quick. The helmet, as you can see, has this uh, helmet material. I'm just going to assign the basic like Lambert. There we go. So that we can at least work with the hair and then we'll uh, reassign the, the metal stuff. So there we go. As you can see, the description, this one right here, or sorry, this one right here, which we can go on this guy right here. There we go. Uh, it is working right now. You can see that we're working on this Spartan hair collection and we're working on this specific description. So it is working. We have this right here and there's a lot of things that we can do. For instance, length is probably the easiest one. Like if we increase the length, let's go there. If we increase the length, we're going to get this thing. And every time we hit the little like eye icon over here, it will update. It should update automatically. There we go. There we go. So now we can see how the hair is affecting the thing, but not only the hair will affect the thing, also the, the guides. So the guides are, are pretty much like curves. So let me set this to one. And, and you can see we have the little guys right there, right? So I'm going to select the guide, which is going to be a little bit difficult. It always like goes to other things first. So quick thing here, let's scale this HDR down to zero. Remember, we don't actually need to see the HDR. Right click on the guide. Right click on the guide. Let me see if it lets me get the guide. Because uh, very similar to how um, curves work inside of, um, what's the word? Instead of Maya, the guides also have some sort of like control, uh, control vertices that we can use. So I'm going to change this to to uh, reference. So now even if I go right click, nothing will happen. And now I should be able, there we go, grab this guide control points. And now I can move this guide point all the way up, like over here. And like over here. And like over here. And if we go back to our uh, element here, you can see that the length of the guide will also affect how long the uh, the hair is because the hair will try to follow the guide as uh, closely as possible. There we go. So yeah, at this point, I'm just going to go to the other uh, guides. Let's start grabbing some of the vertices that they have and improving them. You just click here. It's going to update. Let's go here. Grab this one. And this is one of the ways to, to groom your character, right? Like in this case, uh, the, the little like Spartan helmet that we're doing, you can just like select how, how high or how long you want each specific part of the guides to be. So for instance, like back here, we probably want to have like a short guide and you can see how this thing interpolates in such a way that we're only going to be getting X amount of information on the, on the length of the, of the elements, right? Let's go back to the, to the little, um, like action uh, window here, which is where a lot of the magic happens. And now we're going to talk about the mask right here. So right now you can see that we have a density of one, which we can increase to get like a lot of different hairs, or we can decrease to get like very, very few hairs, super easy and straightforward. Uh, but we also have the mask and the masks are really, really important because they will allow us to paint exactly where we want the things. So I'm going to click this button right here. And I'm going to create a new map and I'm going to call this mask Spartan uh, hair. Okay. And I'm going to start with a color black. I like to start with black and I'm going to say create. So what this does, uh, I'm going to save this very important to save this. 
is it created a new texture and this texture is completely black. So it's pretty much like overriding whatever we have for the hair and now it's gone, like we have no hair. But if we go here, you can see that we're using our brush and I can use this brush with a color uh, white and we can start painting. Let's go here into paint. Oop. There we go. Let me see where is the, let's go. Oh, there, sorry. I need to change the color to, to white. There we go. So now we can paint where we want the hair to be. Like all of this area, right? Careful there. Let's go like on this inside area here. Doesn't matter if it's if it's not perfect because usually hair, well, in this case, it was packed like quite nicely, but hair tends to be like really uneven and unnatural. So having a little bit of variation always helps. There we go. Very important, save, 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 save. Super, super important that you save because otherwise you are gonna lose all of this information. And as you can see, we have the map over there. Let's keep on painting because I forgot to do this like lower section over here. You can even turn on like a wireframe and shaded. There we go. So that we can at least guide ourselves with where we want this sort of like things to be uh, occurring. There we go. Let's add a little bit more there and there. A little bit more there. Again, unevenness, I'm not really worried about. And save, 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 save. So the hair updates. And there we go. As you can see, we're now, um, it looks pretty cool. Now we have this, this very nice effect. Let's go back to uh, selection mode. Let's get rid of uh, this wire from shaded. And as you can see, our hair is working nicely here. Now, of course, we can keep on going with, like, with the, with the uh, like guides, for instance, here and, and turn them around. Or if you're like really sure where things are going, here's where using length, for instance, is really, really handy because we can just increase the length. We can increase the density as well. And, uh, and there's going to be, of course, more hair on the on the viewport. But as you can see, we can create this very, very nice effect, this very nice, like, fuzzy hair. So before we move forward with the uh, modifiers, which is one of the cool things about a hair, let's make sure that we can actually see this thing. So I'm going to say real quick, I'm going to say this as hair test. There we go. And I'm going to select the description right here, right click, and I'm going to sign a new material. And thank thankfully, Arnold has a very nice uh, AI uh, hair material, or it's called standard hair. There we go, which has a lot of setups that are very, very cool. So right now, if we were to render, let's render here real quick, you can see we get hair and it looks quite nice. You can see even the, the brownish color over there uh, giving us a, a nice effect, right? So let's grab the camera, panels, look for selected, and let's look for, a, for like a better view. There we go. So now we have this. Cool, right? And if we rotate this around, uh, there seems to be a weird clipping over there. Uh, that's really, really weird. Let's go back here to the action thing and update. There we go. So now it's uh, it's working properly. Pro probably forgot something about like the first mask or something, but now it's uh, it's applied. So yeah, you can see how this looks. And here's where we're gonna be like changing density to get like the right density that we want. And we can also, also change color. Um, so in this case, we're not using like painted hair. We're actually using like real hair, real nice hair. So if we go here to the standard hair, we can turn on uh, the base color and if we paint like red and lower the melanin, you're gonna get like this effect. Melanin is this brown uh, color, this brown like pigment that we have as humans. And the more melanin you have, the darker uh, things look like uh, moles and hair, uh, of course, a skin. So uh, you can, for instance, increase the redness of the melanin. And then let's bring this back to like no base color and uh, playing around with how much melanin or how little melanin we have, we're gonna obtain like different effects. See, like that's like a, like a nice blonde hair. Let's go for like a, I think actually that one looks kind of nice, right? Let's go for like a, like a nice reddish tone. There you go. Oh, nice. So yeah, I mean, you can again, play around with this. The darker, the more melanin, the darker things or colors will be. So just be mindful of that. Melanin redness is if you want to go into like the blonde or redhead uh, like places. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that looks cool. I like it. Now there's this button right here that I really, really, really like, which is called Melanin Randomize. So if you up this, uh, if you like bring this all the way up, you're going to have like different amounts of, um, of pigmentation on each hair. So this is like getting like those uh, gray hairs and stuff. You can see some hairs have no melanin, some have a lot of melanin. So I recommend adding just a little bit of variation because no one has like perfect hair. There's always like small little again variations. So adding that sort of like effect as you can see looks very, very nice. Let's turn that off. Let's bring, uh, let's grab the geometry again here. Let's get it out of uh, that thing. And let's assign the, the metal material again, just to see how it looks. 
do, but there we go. And now if we take a look, you can see that things start looking quite, quite nice. Now, of course, this looks a little bit weird, like this square effect, very, very unnatural. And yes, we could go into the guides and try to get like the guides as nicely as possible, like as even as possible to get a nice effect. But here's where modifiers come into play and they're really, really powerful as well. So let's go back to the action menu here. And again, make sure that you're on the right pair, which in this case, it's the only one we have. So no, no problem there. We're gonna go here to the modifiers. And the modifiers, as the name implies, will change the way our hair looks. So let's go back to perspective view. There we go. So for instance, one of the most like easiest and uh, easiest to understand modifiers is the noise modifier. If I add a noise modifier and I just hit okay, you're gonna see that there's noise. You saw how the, the hairs moved a little bit. I can turn on here anti-aliasing so that we can see a little bit better. Um, and uh, we can change the hair of like, for instance, the magnitude, like if I say 20, you're gonna say like, this is gonna be really crazy, really, really crazy noise. And uh, it looks a little bit more like old and, and damaged, right? You can say 10 to get a little bit of a, of a better effect. Frequency, we can also change this five or 10. And this is gonna affect pretty much the whole, the whole hair system. So now if I render, you're gonna see things start looking a little bit more realistic, a little bit more believable because they are uh, closer to what we would expect to see in real life, right? Now, uh, here's a fun part. As you can see here, we have this uh, like element, this uh, sort of, uh, what's the word, graph, and they represent the root and the tip. So this is telling me how much this effect, this noise is affecting the root and the tip. So right now the noise is affecting like totally the tip, but not as much the root. If I wanna change that, I can move the root up and now even the root will have a little bit of noise. So you can see how it puffs out a little bit more here on the on the underside of the, of the element, giving us a, an interesting result. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. As you can see, all of these guys, you can create an expression, you can create maps, you can load expressions. Like there's a lot of things that you can do to change how this noise is gonna be affecting. If for instance, I were to say 0.5 in mask, well, it's, it's kind of like reducing the amount of noise to 0.5, right? Like half of what it's supposed to be doing. Um, and uh, here's where people go crazy with, with a lot of, of elements. This is not an area that I'm like totally specialized in, uh, but I, I've been playing around with some of the action things for the last couple of years. And it's a really, really powerful tool, as you can see right here. Now let me show you another modifier, which I think is really, really cool, which is the, which one's cool? The clumping modifier is cool. As you can expect, it will create like clumps. So if I really increase this, like let's say to like 10, you can see how we start getting like stronger and stronger like clumps throughout the, throughout the area. We can change like for instance here the tip and uh, we're gonna get again different effects, but no, I don't like that one as much. There's one that I really like, which is the length. So we're gonna go here to the cut. So normally hairs are not all, uh, they're not the same size, right? So if we add a cut modifier, as you can see, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get a cut. Right now it's very, very little, it's just 0.2. Let me exaggerate this so that you guys can see the, the difference. So let's say five. And now you're gonna see that some hairs are being cut in between zero units and five units. So again, this is where expressions come into play. This is just a very basic expression, very basic scripting. And it goes through each spline and assigns a value between zero and five, and it cuts that little thing on that specific value. If I increase this to like 50, you're gonna see it way more intense. You're gonna see how each hair is like at way, way different lengths, right? So I think a five right there is, is really, really nice. So yeah, look at that, pretty cool. And uh, with every single thing, as I've mentioned, like every single thing that we do, we'll have more and more stuff. As you can see here, we can actually add like wind so that the hair will be flowing when the, when the animation is playing. We can add uh, forces to like push something up or push it something on. I haven't really used this once as much uh, in the projects that I've been using action. Uh, but they're really, really cool. They are some of the of the nicest things. Coil is one that a lot of people like to use. However, it, it is a little bit difficult to control and I'll tell you why. As you can see right now, I turn on the coil and yes, the hair got a little bit like wavy, like curvy. But the problem is even if I were to add like 10 coils, the hair is not really doing what I want, right? It's, it's just like dancing around. Why is this? Well, because right now here in the primitive section, you're gonna see that uh, there's only uh, five modifier counts on the spline. So if you want to bend your hair more, you're gonna need more modifiers here, like 20. So now, as you can see with 20, now we do get this nice little like uh, like a uh, curly hair, okay? So it's pretty pretty similar to fiber mesh. If you guys have ever played with fiber mesh, it, it has a lot of values that are really, really similar. And I think you guys are gonna find it um, quite easy to adapt and, and kind of like learn uh, if you follow some of the, of the guidelines. So in this case, I, I of course don't want that. And in this case, I of course don't want um, the column modifier. There we go. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I just wanna talk about render real quick because 
here is one of those things that render really 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 struggles with so let me show you let me show you here real quick i'm gonna say panels look just selected there we go let's find like a nice uh, effect uh, one of the first things that you're gonna need for a good render is of course a good size right now 960 by 540 doesn't have enough pixels to really like show the nice like flow and and, and form of the hair so i'm gonna go to like 2k square which is i know like quite quite heavy um, but should look uh, quite nice as well. So let's go over there. Um, and yeah, like if we just hit render now, also you can see it's already rendering. You can see the render there. Let's give it another go. There we go. And now you can see since we have more pixels, there's of course more, uh, more elements. The only problem as you can see is here is one of those things that's really, really noisy as well. So right now I'm using CPU, I'm not using GPU. And even, even here, like you can see, it's still really, really noisy. So the noiser is one of the things that you're definitely wanna uh, have. You definitely wanna have as well um, some sort of, um, what's the word? Um, damn, forgot the word. You're gonna have to up the samples, low the noise threshold, like do anything that you can to reduce noise because here it is very noisy. And this hair actually, like the, the shader that we're using right now is a really, really like physically correct hair shader. So it will have like this sort of, sort of surfacey effect and, and shininess and everything. So it will react properly to the light as you can see here. Like look how beautiful this thing, like like the light propagates throughout the whole, the whole thing. So I'm gonna pause this real quick. I actually want the hair to be a little bit darker, or like redder. So let's go. Again, to the description, the description is usually the one that, that holds the, the material. And uh, here in the base color, let's paint it red. There we go, ooh, that looks nice. Maybe not as red, let's desaturate it a little bit. Oh, it really wants me to go full red here, huh? Okay, let's go full red. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, that looks cool. Now, if we, like right now, we only added one guide throughout the whole like crest, but if we had added like two guides, we could have created like a little bit of like more like fanning out on the on the center and everything. And there are ways to, to groom things as well, but it gets a little bit more tricky the, the more you go into it. Um, especially because you're gonna need more guides to, to groom this. This is why we use this method, the, the long splines, because the long splines are giving us this very, very nice uh, result. Now, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention was uh, the thickness of the hair, because right now I think it looks a little bit too thick and that makes it look a little bit fakish. So let's go back real quickly to, to our action uh, modifier. Let's go to the primitives. And here's the, the width of the element. So depending on the, on the width of the object, so like if, I, if I go 0 0.05, then the hair is gonna be a little bit uh, lighter. It's gonna be like softer. It's gonna look a little bit more light hair. And this one is also really important because as you can see right now, um, there's no taper and uh, the root and the tip are perfectly like the same. So, so it's not giving us this sort of like hair shape. A uh, very common technique here is to bring the root down, add a node here to make it like a little bit fat and then bring this thing down like this. And if you want to keep this softer, you can right click and change this linear to smooth. And then here, linear to smooth. And now you're gonna have like this sort of like teardrop shape and that should give us like a, like a more realistic looking hair. So see how it, it, it nicely becomes like really, really thin at the end. Now, I think it might be a good idea to go back to 0.1 in, uh, in width um, because it's gonna go really, really thin uh, on the top. And this should give us, as you can see, a way more realistic effect. So yeah, this is it guys, quick rundown about action. If you uh, like this, let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to, to do a little more research and, and show you more stuff as well about specific things that you might wanna do with action. We are planning to have like a more in-depth, uh, eventually like later down the line, probably later this year, uh, like an X-Gen course where we talk about like grooming a full character or something, uh, but that's still in the works. So we're still seeing uh, if there's enough demand and, and people wanna see about that or, or learn about that because it is a very nice topic. It is a very complex topic, but it's also quite uh, resource intensive. So yeah, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. Remember tomorrow we have Alejandro here. Uh, he's probably gonna continue with the helmet, uh, with the robot helmet that he started yesterday. So if you want to learn about the modeling with Lender, make sure to check his video from yesterday, from uh, Tuesday. And I'll see you back on Friday. We're probably gonna go back to the uh, to the medieval lighthouse. Remember, from not this uh, weekend, weekend, but next weekend, we will have our portfolio review. So prepare your stuff because we're gonna be having some nice feedback uh, very, very soon. That's it, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.